and I'm coming to you with, I guess, uh, what is a video response to Happily Ella After here on YouTube. She's uh, doing her annual Gorgeous Girl Challenge, and I participated last year, and that was the first time I think that I even got to find out who she was. So um, she's challenging us to those of us who want to participate into sending in some embellishments that would be in groups of four and the requirements are that they be a two inch size embellishment. So what I've been working on here is that I took it upon myself just as a challenge to see, you know, what can I make that's around that size because she did say she's not policing it. So, <laughs> and thank you for that, um, Jeannie, because it's hard to work in the smaller sizes, even though I love making tiny little things, but uh, embellishments, but it's for me, it's kind of easier to make them as I'm creating a project. And I am working on a project right now that will soon be done God willing. If this video is kind of weird, it might be that I edit it so that it's all in one. So um, this is one of them. And of course, this one broke the rules a little bit because who would I be if I didn't break a rule? <laughs> anyway, um, this is a, a uh, hipster image um, from Cricut Design Space. It's the hipster giraffe. And this has a huge significance for me because of the project that I'm working on. And I just, I made some extras, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, and, ahead and, and share these because uh, I might get a little too sentimental if I keep looking at these on my desk. So I decided to turn it into a happy thing. Um, and so these are, um, they are in groups of four. So what I did was, because they're kind of big and this is the size bag that I have, I just put two in the front, two in the back. But these are the ones that I made with um, the little square image in uh, being the two inch size, even though that square image is actually two and a quarter inch size. But in any case, that's one of them. Um, then the next one that I'm going to show you is this one here, and I'm just going to assemble it and I'm going to show you what I use for it. That one um, I made. Uh, oh, the other requirement, I'm sorry, before I forget, is that it have at least three elements uh, included in the two-inch size embellishment. So I use these dies here. I think this is so very pretty and, and delicate. Um, so this is what I selected was a Cricut paper that I have um, in this lovely color. So I just cut it all, you know, it was kind of easy, you know, because it's just cutting it all at once. And what I did was that um, if I can get my adhesive here, of course. Um, I just alternated the petal placement there so that it could um, look like, you know, pretty flower, of course, because that's what this is. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm all over the place. I haven't had my second cup of coffee yet. Let's see here. I'm gonna trying to clear this out and I'm, there's another one there I'll show in a moment. Okay, so that's my stack of petals, flowers. And this you can shape if you have the um, the tools to shape your the petals. You can definitely make this look entirely different. I'm just trying to keep it flat. Uh, I also used a different die that I have. This is actually a magnolia die and I'm not going to get it out right now, but it's just a leaf and it has what I like about it is that it does impress embossing on the leaf, I'm sorry. And uh, and it also has these little notches. They're very, very slight little notches on the edge there, but if you can see in that, I hope this captures it. It makes such a pretty leaf. And I love dyes that have a leaf motif for some reason. And, well, actually it's not for some reason. It's because I have the Cricut um, machine and I have the Cameo machine, which is a blessing. It really is. However, having said that, dies have the ability to cut things with a little bit of this beveled edge that occurs when you run the paper through the machine. Um, that gives it a little something extra that, that the Cricut and Cameo machines do not. Uh, it's, I guess it's a matter of texture and I really love texture and you can't really achieve that with the machines. I'm hearing good things about the maker and the rotary wheel, however, 
So I would love to play around with that at some point and see how that goes. But I meant to say here, I made a, I made a mistake and you get to watch me fix it. <laughs> Learning opportunity. I got talking and forgot a, le a layer because this is, it was a requirement that it have three layers, right? So I'm removing two of those little petal later, layers and I got lost in conversation there. I'm adding this little doily because I have this set of doily dies. This is one that's a little, um, has these little loops. I don't know if you can see that, that one. And that came in a set of four. Um, there it is in the blue. So what I decided was to break it up, break up that little flower and add the doily there just for a pop of color and texture. I was talking about texture and that's what reminded me like, wait a minute, <laughs> there's more to this than just the, t the petals because any, you know, you can make a flower any day, right? But why not make one with a little doily there? And it's a little askew. Let's see if I can fix that. It's hard for me to concentrate when I'm making videos, but I did want to share the process because this is it's not just a video response to Jeannie, although I did want to do that, but I wanted to show how, um, you know, I had to put my little thinking cap on to come about these, these embellishments, and, um, and I'm having fun making them. So there's, here's a better placement. I'm a stickler for making sure that it's all, you know, in um, correct order there, if you will. To top that off, I, what I decided to do was to add a little pearl. And I did, I started these off at night, so I apologize, Jeannie, if all the pearls are not the same color. I just couldn't tell. <laughs> I couldn't tell with the, the lighting that I had. And it's daytime here and it's still dark as can be because of the placement of where my workspace is. And sadly, the uh, the lighting is not something that I can really do much about at this moment. So, all right. So that's that finishes off that little flower and my three embellishments or three uh, separate. Um, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm losing the words, but. The separate elements, I should say, are the uh, silver leaves, the doily, and the pearl. So I, I hope that's, a, you know, that fulfills the requirement for that. But that's one set of four. So here are the other three. And I've got glitter all, all over the place here. But this is paints and glitter. So you may expect <laughs> to see that now. What I did on these other ones that you I haven't finished on, on this last one is the stickles. I did add stickles on the edge just in case, you know, the actual papers didn't count as two separate things. I wanted to be, you know, play it safe. I did want to show you guys that's how I finished the other ones. It has a slight bit of glimmer there on the edges, okay? So there's that set of four. And I really, really love the colors, how they, you know, it's kind of this peachy pink, uh, the light blue and the, uh, the silver. Now I'm going, going to show you another one that I made and uh, this one I'm not going to assemble on camera. I'll show you how I made it and it's these little ones here. Let's see if I can... Um, and what it says on the little, uh, the smallest little portion here is it says inspire. And I'm trying to, here we go. I don't know if you guys can see it. And I'm sorry that the focus is off, but maybe there. I'll try to post pictures, of course, as I always do. Um, this, I used uh, the same silver paper, but then behind it is a blue butterfly and um, cardstock, so it's actually very sturdy. I use the same uh, Cricut cardstock in that peachy pink color, but what I did was that I used this beautiful stamp set. It's from Inka Dinka Do, which I think is a really wonderful company. They have beautiful stamps, all of the ones I've ever gotten from them. Um, and I don't even know if they're still around, but all of the Inka Dinka Do stamps I've ever um, purchased have been absolutely beautiful. I used this image here, which I thought was just gorgeous, even though it's, it's a tiny little square. 
and then I use the little one here that says inspire and enjoy life inside the butterfly. I stamp both of the the one with the scroll work I stamped in uh, Ranger embossing ink, which is clear. It's upside down. <laughs> it's clear. And then I added the embossing powder in that um, that sort of teal green, if you will. It's uh, And it's got glitter in it. So I embossed that first. Then, let me see here. There's this one. This one didn't come out so great, but you get the idea of how that was looking. So you see how there's glitter in that? Then um, I emboss the other one just in white. I just use this little white ink that I had around. And then I cut it out using this one, the stitch die. And this is also a stacking set, but I wanted to just use a small one because this is two inches. And then I use my Martha Stewart butterfly punch, which just about everyone has. And then added the little gems there so that it would have three elements. Gems, a butterfly, and then the little square there. So there is another set of four. And I was tinkering around thinking like, you know, this is all kind of in the same color family. And if you see that, there's a set of three. Now Jeannie did um, stipulate that only up to four sets would be allowed so that everyone can have an equal chance, which I think is wonderful for the entries. So this is three entries so far. And I was thinking, keep going, make one more, because she said you can make up to four, so why not? Now again, the stipulation or requirement was that they would be two inches in size. However, um, she did say that she's not policing this, <laughs> meaning that, you know, it's, it's about being creative. So, and that's what I like about these challenges is um, that it pushes your, your creativity. And here's what I've come up with, and I'm going to assemble it as I speak to you. So bear with me um, if I falter in my words. I thought to use these beautiful flowers, which you can cut out using these dies here from Creative Basics. Uh, or I think that's what it's called. Creative Basics designed by Rhea, and that's R-H-E-A. I got this from a recent haul that Amador uh, posted, and thank you Amador for being an enabler. Uh, <laughs> if you ever get to see this video, I just wanna say thanks to you. I was able to purchase some really beautiful dyes, and I, of course, love flowers. And those I like because I'm going to show you what they cut like. You see that? I had to pick those up because, first of all, the price was outrageously low. And secondly, they have the, that little stitched edge which makes a flower that looks like that. And I thought that was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and, of course, that's layering all four of the dies on there, as you can tell. And then I just added a little pearl center but that was just my little trial one. What I decided was to cut it out of this paper that, you know, just different beige papers because Jeannie d did say use your scraps and that's exactly what I've done. Um, I used some beige papers which I then inked with oxide inks. One of them was worn lipstick and the other one, I can't remember the name. Let's see here. Um, Walnut stain. Sorry, I had already put it away. Walnut stain and uh, worn lipstick oxide inks. I'm going to layer these together. And let's see, where was I going with this? The little stamps that I stamped out from the postcard set look like this. And let's see if that'll focus or not. I'm going to try to... If it doesn't focus, I apologize. And I did add glossy accents in the center. And this is the one that says, I stole your heart. It corresponds with another die set that has a little girl with a little blue bird on the cover. Um, this is the one that says, fly away with me. And that has the little blue, uh, what am I saying? It has the little balloon. This is sugar and spice. It has the little candy canes on it. That would be great for uh, for something Christmas related, um, or you know, birthday, whatever. 
And then this is Percy, and it has a little seashell. And that goes with the little girl who's, she's like a little pirate. So those are going to be the centers of my flowers, I decided. However, I also decided to use this die here, which is very small. This one is, let's measure it so we know. And I think this, I want to say that this was a Spellbinder set, but I can't remember now because I took it out of the packaging. So this is about an inch and a quarter wide. And then as far as the length, it's two, two inches. So it fits the, you know, the requirements. But I didn't cut it out of paper. What I did was that I used some uh, lace that I have in a very light blue color and I cut it out of that. Now this ended up being shorter because of the si the width of the lace but I like that. Um, so that's gonna go on here and I used a piece of ribbon that I tied into bows at both ends because I'm making a banner. So that's gonna be one of my embellishments. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna layer this together and I've been waiting for my hot glue gun to do its thing and I do believe it's ready. I'm going to just apply a little drop of hot glue there and adhere my ribbon to the lace. And of course this is going to be very dainty and delicate but that's precisely what I wanted to make because of the size it's um you know it kind of just lends itself to that and then i thought i will just add the little flowers here and there but i don't know if i want to use that big one i might keep it to the medium size ones here medium and small and then add that in the center the, that was my thought because this is kind of you know in celebration of those gorgeous girls and this can be then, you know, once she receives it, she can kind of play around with the petals a little bit. So I think I'm going to go with that. And my, uh, my heat gun is, is um, tangled up with my hot glue gun. So that's why I'm hesitating a little bit here. But I wanted to film the process video because um, I tend to make a lot of embellishments and things for my mini albums, but I don't, because I kind of work in the moment, I don't film what I make. And then sometimes people want to know where I bought what I used, and it turns out that I, that I have made it on my own. And this challenge was a great opportunity to kind of, you know, just look at things and say, hmm, how can I use that a little differently to make it a little smaller? So I'm adding just a tiny, tiniest drops of adhesive here because I don't want to make this um, too messy. I don't... And the good thing is that you can remove the hot glue while it's still warm. So there's the beginning of that, if you can tell. And I just have that tiny bit of lace showing in the background in that beautiful tag shape. So these are going to be uh, very whimsical. It's not going to be straight across or anything like that. Um, I'm going to add my next one at the other end so that I have a clear beginning and end here as far as the distance or spacing I should say, not distance. And I just glued it onto my surface here but that's okay. Don't need a lot. I went ahead and picked up this mat, which I'm going to destroy in about three seconds, of course, because it's made of paper. I guess I should have um, protected it, but I wanted to eliminate the glare when I film videos, and I know that a lot of you uh, smart ladies have picked up some background poster board. And I thought, you know what, why not learn from the rest? It's a brilliant idea. 
So I went looking for one, but I couldn't find couldn't find pretty ones that were matte. They were all glossy. Uh, I was at Michael's, and uh, okay, I think I'm gonna put the "I Stole Your Heart" here on this one. So anyway, that's how I ended up with this um, cloud background that you're seeing here. I did put glossy accents on top there. And I might put another layer before I call this done. But in the meantime, I'm just going to keep working here. And there's my other end. I did add a, I made a banner for a mini album that I recently made. And I loved how it came out because I had used cotton instead of paper for the little little banner pieces and I, I really love the way that that had turned out so I decided I would do the same here and you can tell this ribbon is kind of twirling back and forth but I think that adds that um, feeling of movement and like I said this is gonna be whimsical this is not you know anything serious and yes, I did just glue my finger right on to the back of that piece of ribbon. So that's how I roll. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to add this one to the bottom, I think. And I'm just making it up as I go along. Let's see here. Or maybe in the center. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, trying to pay attention to the spacing between these, and I don't know if that translates well on video. Oops. And I'm working on some other projects, uh, which also lent, um, they lent themselves to to me wanting you know to participate in this one because I was making embellishments for something else already, so I figured you know what I'll go ahead and do both while I'm at it. This is banner number four, and as you can tell here, this one. Oof, that glue is very very hot. I don't recommend you do this at home. Just so you know, if, uh, there are little protective pieces that you can purchase so that you don't burn yourself. <laughs> um, I think I've just grown so used to it. I don't think anything of it. Alright, so this one's going to go oops, a little bit higher. Yep. I'm going to put this one a little higher. I'm again, adding the tiniest dot of glues I can get away with there. But because it's hot glue, it's going to stay. And I had cut out the bigger flowers, but I'm thinking the this makes it look more dainty if I keep it with the smaller ones. That bead of glue is probably too big, but if I don't squeeze it, it'll be okay. So here is... Now the other requirement, I don't know if I mentioned this already, because I've tried to film this video several times, it's just I've been interrupted one too many times today, but um, the requirement for the actual embellishment was that it would be two inches, that it would be, it would have three elements in it, different elements, and in this case what I have is a ribbon, and I hope this isn't cheating. <laughs> I have a ribbon, I have lace, and I have paper. So, I mean, I'm gonna clean it up, of course, and get those little cobwebs out of the way. But there's my little banner, and each element in it is only two inches large. And I think it's playful, and it's fun, and it's cute, and it's gonna have that little bit of shine in the center there. Um, and she could put this on the cover of a of a notebook or a layout if she does a scrapbook page or even on a gift, you know. Um, so there's that one. 
All right, my friends, so I am back. I took a bit of, uh, I don't know, I went, I fell through a little bit of a rabbit hole, so. <laughs> oh, as it happens, I colored the image, um, one of the images of the uh, frame stamp set. It looks like this, and it has several of the little gorgeous girls. I went, uh, I went with the one that's uh, from Bluebird's Proposal, and that's what she looks like. I colored her in with Prismacolor pencils and w just added her here to the front. And then um, of this package, this is how I'm sending out these embellishments, uh, which I don't think I mentioned. And I made this envelope, so I'm going to show you how this is all in here. On the front, I added more of these flowers that I made um, with the little pearl centers and the leaves in gold. I added some antique lace here at the bottom, just like a little swag. And this is where I say I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole because I hadn't planned on decorating this in such a way. But I really like these little flowers and I think they add a lot of dimension. Um, I like how they looked on the front with the different pinks and um, so this is the envelope. Uh, it's a kind of like a loaded envelope if you will but it's quite small. I made toppers for each of the little packages that contain the embellishments that I'm sending. They're all on uh, background. This particular one is the one from the Gorgeous Girl stamp and die set, which is the postcard. So I did end up using that. And the ones that you see as the topper there are from, they're from the Tonic, from the Memory Book uh, collection. And what I did was I created this envelope, I'll show you, using one of the larger dies that's got this beautiful edge and then I used another one and folded it but I did create a gusset on the bottom uh, before I adhered it to the background paper here and this is double sided so you can see there it's got another one in the back so I did um, what I did was I adhered a piece of paper at the bottom in the, sh in the form of a V not that you could tell, but, um, and that allowed me to create a little pocket there. And what, that, of course, gave me enough room so that I could add the embellishments on both sides with, um, you know, plenty of wiggle room there. They're not very deep pockets, but this is just for presentation purposes, of course. And what I like is that the embellishments are not so bulky that they're going to slide out or anything like that. And then I can add my information back here, and then in the front, of course, I can add these two packages. And it's quite simple, but I think it's a sweet, you know, way of presenting the embellishments. If you're giving something away, it's always nice to, you know, make it frilly and pretty. That's why we own all these things, right? So that's my little presentation there of the embellishment challenge presented by Jeannie from Happily Ella After. So this will be going to her. I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you can be inspired and be blessed. Thank you so much for watching. Anyone who's new at my uh, on my channel here, I just wanted to say a quick thank you for subscribing. And please give me feedback on what you see. I'd love to know what it is that you like to watch on my channel. And if there's anything that you're interested in, um, Feel free to send me a message and let me know. I'm paints and glitter uh, at gmail.com. Well, I also go by paints and glitter on Facebook. You can find me that way. If not, then encourage arts is another way to find me there. Okay, have a beautiful day. Be blessed. Bye bye.